Sculpting is a form of fine art of making representative or abstract forms, especially by carving stone or wood or by casting metal or plaster. This ancient kind of art has been a means of human expression since prehistoric times. This week we get to learn and understand what sculpting is, its history and the evolution of sculpting and the effect the current generation of students pursuing the fine arts sculpturing are facing as the basics was scrapped off in the early 844 system. But first, let's see why we claim sculpting to be an ancient art. This is the Limo Ninguvu. of Liberty is a sculpture located on Liberty Island in Manhattan in New York. Did you know that the torch is covered with a layer of sheets of gold? The statue was a dedication to the people of United States from the people of France during the celebration of 100 years of the signing of the United States Declaration of Independence. The statue is an icon of freedom. The Statue of Liberty is wearing shackles on her feet. That's new, right? The shackles are symbols of freedom from oppression that America is supposed to represent. Her crown contains seven spikes and these are intended to represent both the seven seas and the seven continents of the world. That's interesting, right? Also, the famous torch she holds aloft in her upraised right hand is a symbol of the glowing power of enlightenment that expresses the meaning of her original name. Have you ever thought of what she's holding on her other hand? It's a tablet that is inscribed with the date of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. The other common statue is common in most Brazilian telenovela. It is considered the largest art deco statue in the world and the fifth largest statue of Jesus in the world. Do you have an idea? It is located at the peak of the 700 meter Cocovado mountain and it's the most famous icon in Rio de Janeiro. Come on, you know it. Okay, relax. I'm talking of the famous Christ Redeemer statue. Now that you know it, did you know you can get married beneath the Christ Redeemer statue? Yes, you, the bride-to-be would want to consider it. As it has a small chapel beneath the statue. Interesting, right? This statue, which is viewed both as a sign of a welcoming hug or a sign of Jesus on the cross depending on how you view it, back in 2008, a ferocious a thunder striped and damaged the head, eyebrows and fingers. But thanks to the soapstone insulating feature, majority of the lightning was arched. We have the Great Sphinx of Giza, commonly referred to as the Sphinx. It is a limestone statue of a mythical creature with a lion's body and a human head. Yes, I know that's weird, but again, isn't all art weird? Moving on, it is the oldest known monumental sculpture and is commonly believed to have been built by ancient Egyptians. Anything ringing a bell now? Well, I guess not because most of you refer to them as the pyramids. Yes, pyramids are not their name but their shapes. These wonderfully created sculptures are known as the Sphinx. The statue which has a lion's body and a human head apparently is believed to have lost its nose. Yes, the nose. Have you ever wondered or noticed that it is missing a nose? Yes, you heard me right. The Sphinx of Giza does not have a nose. I guess this too is new to you, but it is our mandate here at Ilimuninguvu to not only inform you, but educate you. 
The Sphinx lost its nose to Napoleon's men, but 18th century drawings revealed that the nose of the Sphinx was missing before Napoleon's arrival. It is believed that the nose of the Sphinx was shot off. As we move on, I'm pretty sure we are sailing in the same boat on matters terming sculptures as an ancient art, ain't we? Check out the next statue. A total proof that sculpturing is more or less an antique kind of art. This is a sculpture whose inspiration is from the Bible. Can you guess which statue it is? His character stood out and yes, the Italians do use the masterpiece as a representation of Renaissance, rebirth and revival. Come on, open your Bibles now. If not, try remembering your Sunday school days. And the obvious clue is, he's one of the great men in the Bible. We are talking about David. In the Bible, David is a young shepherd boy who slew a giant with one stone and a simple slingshot. We know that this brave shepherd boy grew up to be a great king of Israel. The David who became the king of Israel is an individual sculpted by eminent Italian artist Michelangelo Buonarroti. The statue is referred to as the David statue. Michelangelo is also a painter and an architect, and in his long-term career, he's won near mythical fame as one of Europe's preeminent Renaissance men. The temperamental and brilliant Michelangelo did also craft several masterpieces including the David, the Pieta, and the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. But our focus today is on the David statue. A representation of the decision made by David in the Bible to fight Goliath but before the battle had actually taken place. A moment between conscious choice and action. His forehead is drawn. His neck tense and the veins bulge out of his lower right hand. The twist of his body effectively conveys to the viewer the feeling that he is in motion. An impression heightened with an asymmetrical arrangement of the human figure in which the line of the arms and shoulders contrast while balancing those of the hips and the legs. The statue is an interpretation of a common ancient Greek theme of the standing heroic male nude. The asymmetrical poses is thought of as a distinctive feature of antique sculpture. This is typified in David as the figure stands with one leg holding its full weight and the other leg forward. This classic pose causes the figure's hips and the shoulders to rest at the opposing angles, giving a slight S-curve to the entire torso. In addition, the asymmetrical position is emphasized by the turn of the head to the left and by the contrasting position of the arms. From Italy to Ukraine, in Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine lies one of the tallest statues of a woman in the world. I'm talking about the motherland called a statue. It is a statue of a woman raising her sword to the sky, commemorating the Battle of Stalingrad. The statue also serves as a symbol of the Soviet victory during World War II, in which the Red Army defeated the German troops. The statue's name more literally translates to the motherland that gave birth to me is calling, referring to the figurative Mother Russia. The statue features a serious expression of a call by the mother to her sons to stand up and fight for the motherland. The strong hands open mouthed as if calling expression and the statue's appearance creates a feeling of power. The statue looks the best in all the seasons. The sculpture is a stainless steel and it is 62 meters tall and it weighs 560 tons. The sword in the statue's right hand is 16 meters long and weighs 9 tons as the left hand held up is a 13 by 8 meters. And if you thought the David statue was the only nude sculpture, there is another nude statue by Auguste Rodin, a French sculptor. The thinker statue is a nude male figure of over life size sitting on a rock with his chin resting on one hand as though deep in thought and is often used as an image to represent philosophy. And did you know, the sculpture of the thinker statue Rodin 
was hired to make the sculpture for a new museum of decorative arts in Paris and the incredible detail of the towering piece required 37 years of work from Rodin. Secondly, Tinker statue nakedness follows in the style of the heroic nudes of Michelangelo and it's also suspected that the works of Rodin's contemporary German sculptor Hugo Reinhold was an inspiration too. Lastly, Rodin did experiment with a plast cast version measuring around 3 feet tall but the sculptor made the statue to be 6 feet tall. Last but not least, there is a statue whose outlook was on the basis of one of the Disney fairy tale cartoon movies for children. It is located in Copenhagen, Denmark. The statue is known as the Little Mermaid. It is spectacularly located on the harbor and shoreline, a position which makes it look 25% smaller in size than its real size. Though the Little Mermaid statue in Denmark is the original one, currently there are 14 copies of the Little Mermaid on display in cities across the world, including one in the United States of America, in Brazil, Romania and Spain. That's not all. Have you ever imagined of statues underwater? There's an amphitrite statue of Grand Caymans. It's found 50 feet in water off the beach at Sunset House on Grand Cayman Island. And more to it is that in Greek mythology, the amphitrite statue of Grand Cayman is believed to be the wife of Poseidon. Poseidon is a statue figure watching over the maritime city of Gothenburg. He is believed to be a Greek god of the sea. He hears sailors' prayers for calm waters and safe returns. The amphitrite statue is also considered the personification of the sea as a whole and the mother of seals and dolphins. The other underwater statue is Ocean Atlas. It is found in Bahamas off the coast of New Providence. Ocean Atlas is a statue by Jason Taylor, which is a sculpture of a young Bahamian girl who appears to be holding up the ocean much like the mythological titan Atlas shouldered the burden of the heavens. The allusion to the ocean Atlas made serves as a reminder of the many environmental threats that our oceans face, from overfishing and global warming to water pollution and the Great Pacific garbage patch, and a warning that future generations will have to deal with the consequences of current environmental neglect. And do you remember the Christ Redeemer statue? Under the water too, there is a statue which looks familiar to this. We are talking about the Christ of the Abbey statue. It is a submerged bronze statue of Jesus Christ and the original one is located in the Mediterranean Sea. The statue depicts Christ offering a benediction of peace with his head and hands raised skyward. Let's come closer home. We too have statues which are sculptures formed by molding. Beginning with the Supreme Court statue is a naked boy holding a fish. Now wait a minute, what does that signify? Do we know? Do we not? Anyway, let's move on. It marks the entrance of the Supreme Court of Kenya. It was initially known as the Hamilton Fountain. This statue was ordered during the Second World War and it signified justice. No wonder its placement is at the entrance of the Supreme Court of Kenya. That aside, we have another common statue along Moy Avenue in Nairobi City. It was erected in the year 2011 and since its erection, it has become a common meeting point in Nairobi. Yes, I'm talking of the Tom Boyer statue. The setup is in honor of Tom Boyer, a Kenyan minister who was assassinated in 1969. Oh yes, what you don't know is, and it stands about 20 meters from where Boyer was murdered. We educate you as it is our mandate here on Elimo Ningovu. 
The third statue is at the Nyayo Monument at the Uhuru Park. It is a four-sided monument and its erection was an effort to symbolize the country's site with four separate faces that are all united at one point in the central axis at Mount Kenya with an upward stretched arm holding the Fimbo ya Nyayo. Did you know? The dark color of the monument in the park that is mostly green helps to give the structure its contrast from its environment. But still, there is an attempt to view it in a brown spectrum in tandem with the environment. It is surrounded by water, which gives that safe distance of view between it and the viewer and monument itself. There is a statue that is located at the junction of Quinange Street and Kenyatta Street. Next to the GPO building in Nairobi lies the Garzon Frenzy Memorial Statue. Did you know the monument's positioning is at the point from which a distance from and to Nairobi and the other parts of the country was measured? And it currently resembles a grilled tomb. The Garzon Frenzy Memorial Statue is also called the Nairobi Military Stone. Lastly, the entry to the legendary KICC too has a statue. The Jomo Kenyatta statue is an 80-year-old British sculptor's masterpiece by the name James Butler. It has that quality of aging with grace. The bronze are darkened and finely sculpted to the founding father's almost daunting resemblance. A view from every angle of this statue shows you just how much it is an integral part of the KICC square. Approaching it from the front gives you the kick as a backdrop. In its own veracity, a magnificent masterpiece, and this would have proven a hard nut in competing with the detail involved. This statue of the first president is sitting on a podium of reinforced concrete. Bush hammered and detailed with the sculptor's own signature and idea of installation in fine four button suit and traditional African gear covering the suit and the head. In his hands rests his fimbo, a common denominator known with Jomo Kenyatta in his rule when he always had a defining item at hand. And he's looking beyond. What's unknown to many is that the art piece was unveiled in 1973 when KICC was opened to mark 10 years of independence.